He's noble, he's sophisticated, and he's the royal snitch. Zazu is a loyal bird dedicated to keeping the peace on the savanna, except for when he passive-aggressively sings songs to Scar. Then my man is at war. His animator was just as dedicated, but instead of gossiping about antelopes, she was, and still is, dedicated to the quality of art she creates. Want to know more? Let's find out! Before we start, don't forget to check out our Discord, our coffee page, and like, subscribe, comment, hit the bell, all the things. It really helps us out. Ellen Woodbury is, without a doubt, one of the most prolific and celebrated animators in Disneyland. Born in- wait. Wait. I sense someone doubting this. If you doubt this, just stop watching now. Are they gone? Good. We don't need that negativity. Moving on. Born in 1962, Ellen grew up in the small city of Corning. Yep, we said Corning. Open up your ears. <laughs> yeah. In her town of New York, she was exposed to art throughout her young life. When I was a senior in high school, uh, my best friend Ellen, um, we were the two Ellens, she insisted, we just finished reading uh, T.H. White's The Once and Future King. And she insisted that we go and see the sword in the stone. Um, <laughs> and I said, no, I don't want to see that. And she said, oh, come on. We just finished the book. You have to come and see it. So she dragged me to see it. And I was sitting there and it was, it was, I love the book. Okay. And, uh, the, the movie was so much fun and I'm sitting there and I'm going, wow, this is really fun. And then I thought to myself, this must be fun to do. And, and so that was kind of the seed that got planted. And then I went to college at uh, State University in New York. When Ellen went to college, she picked up after-hours drawing classes and eventually applied to Syracuse, where she did a film program for four years. Hey, orange, you glad she did that? <laughs> What's that? Oh, I'm told we have already exhausted our pun budget with that orange joke and the corn one from earlier. Well, shucks. <laughs> I really thought those puns were appealing. <laughs> and now I'm paying for those with my own money. And I was thinking that I would probably major in environmental science and language because I environmental science was really interesting to me. And I, and, I mean, the conservation movement ha had been going at, at that time. It was not in such a crisis as it is now. But anyway, so it was, it was uh, really, really in my mind a lot. And so, so I was sort of working toward that goal. And, and then there are times in your life when you come to a crossroads and, you know, you have to decide what path to take. And I hadn't declared a major yet. And, and I wasn't really sure that I wanted to do it because I really liked drawing. I really liked art. And I started doing these like after hours art classes for no credit at the college I was going to. And, and uh, I, I remember I was driving back east somewhere it just sort of struck me hey i should just go for this so so i did i i put together a portfolio i applied to uh, syracuse university for the film program and i went there for four years and then i i uh I, pl I applied to disney and they turned me down so i went to cal arts luckily for her ellen star shone brightly at cal as she clinched awards for her two films in her first and second years well, I made two films at CalArts, one the first year and one the second year, and they both won awards. And my my second film, my master's thesis film, won a Focus Film Award, a Focus Student, it was a student, national student competition. Um, and it won one of those things. And the prize was um, a week in LA with uh, experts in the film industry. So I was already there because I was at CalArts, but it was still really cool because we went around to all these different studios and, and met these people and learned all these different aspects of live action and animated filmmaking. And um, I, I met Ed Hansen, who was the vice president of Disney Feature Animation. And I, and I said, I said, um, I want to work for you. And he said something like, um, I, need, I needed to put in my portfolio. After the week was over, I, I sent my portfolio down to Disney. And... Uh, um, they they had it for two weeks or whatever it was, 
And somebody called me and said I could come and pick it up. And I said, well, did you see my films? And, and they said, no. And I said, oh, well, why don't you hang on to it until you have a chance to see my films because it's the best work that I've done. Um, so, so they did and then they hired me. Ellen worked with Dave Pacheco at Disney to make overlapping animations of various characters. Ellen immensely enjoyed her work, which showed in the results of people complimenting her work and giving enormously positive reviews. Like I always say, give me praise and give me a raise. <laughs> but if my boss is watching, I am just kidding. But seriously, I could use a bigger pun budget, don't you think? I am just kidding about that too. Um, in my case, I, I worked with Dave Pacheco, who who is a, um, a key cleanup guy and, and went on to be a, a another stellar Disney artist. Um, but uh, he allowed me to do the overlapping animation on hair tails and drapery for um, Dawson, Olivia, Mrs. Hudson, and, and some of Basil. We didn't do a lot of Basil, but um, so, so uh, he let me do hair tails and drapery, uh, which, you know, and I was, I was doing the cleanup, but, but I still got to do that stuff as well, which was really fun for me because I wanted to animate. Um, so, um, so Dave was, was complimented on the overlapping animation that, that he'd done in his scenes. And he said, oh, I didn't do that. That was Ellen. So it was like, what, what a wonderful thing to, to happen to me um, it, to get a compliment, to have someone notice, you know, that I did a nice job on the tail. Always eager to sharpen her skills and perfect her craft, Ellen started playing around with the great mouse detective character. So during during that time, all that downtime, I started doing animation tests. And I took the little drunken mouse from Great Mouse Detective, I can't remember his name, um, and I started doing little tests on him. And I and I showed him to anyone, any animator that would look at him. <laughs> so I was getting like comments from everybody. I would, I, I would get like, you know, five different sets of comments on, on whatever I'd done. Um, and and I, I, I kept on doing this. And, and finally, someone said something to me about um, about being an animating assistant. And it was like, oh, yeah, that's what I want. So I so I so I went to Kathleen Gavin, who was the associate producer. And I said, I'd like to be an animating assistant. And she said, great. What's that? So <laughs> So I had to explain to her, and I guess she did some research to, to actually get the, the real official definition of what it was. Um, so, so finally, I was assigned to an animator, and I was assigned to Mike Gabriel. I worked with Hendel Butoy, and, the, and I worked with Mark Henn. And um, so I had one person that, that I could show my tests to, and they, and they would respond to me, and then I could learn what they wanted, you know, what they wanted me to know sure. that I didn't obviously didn't know that I demonstrated through my tests that I didn't know yet. You were doing that uh, um, uh, sort of assistant uh, animating assistant on Oliver and Company, but you you finally became an animator on on the Little Mermaid, right? Yes. And, yes. And, and and what were you what what characters were you working on uh, in, on the Little Mermaid? I worked on I I was mostly. Sebastian, I was um, Duncan Archibanks at that time was my was my mentor. So and I was in the Sebastian unit, but I also did a lot of flounder. Um, I think that was it. Sebastian and flounder. Wow. And with Sebastian, wow. I did all the like the micro animation because that's what animating assistants got was the teeny stuff. Right. So I did an awful lot of micro Sebastians walking and talking and swimming and singing. <laughs> so it was really technical stuff because he had six legs, two claws. Um, so so walking. Wow. That that was that was really tough. A lot of uh, changing perspective where he would have to grow teenier as he as he walked away from camera. Sure. Um, um, this, so so it, it was a, there was a lot of continuity. Um, which is which is not the storytelling scenes. It's the getting from here to there scenes. Um, but you're but he still has to be in character. It was I was excited about. I was tremendously excited about everything. Everything I wanted to do, I, I wanted to do it the best that I could. Ellen swiftly move on to the next challenge of working on rescuers down under. I did incidental mice and Krebs the koala. Okay. Uh, 
And that that was another. This is like you know, Ellen, the persistent one, I guess. <laughs> um, um, I I um, I wanted to do Krebs. He he was just a little character in the animal prison, and uh, so I started doing personal tests on Krebs, and uh, and I showed him to Mike Gabriel, who was one of the directors, and uh, and he he was like, you know, well, I don't know, and I and I said, <laughs> so I, I I was a fairly outspoken person, I guess. Um, well, there were not a lot of women animators either. I mean, think, I think there were two or three. Yeah, Kathy, um, the, the, Kathy Zielinski. Yeah, and, me and Kathy were, until Kathy left, we were pretty yeah. much the four. And Cynthia Overman was was there at, on for some pictures as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, I said I said to Mike, well, I'm just going to keep doing tests on Krebs until you until you let me animate him. So. <laughs> <laughs> So I did. And, and ultimately he did. He, he said, okay. Um, we went, we went on a trip to San Diego zoo to study Australian animals. And I, I was mystified by the fur on a koala. It's like, <laughs> cause you know, I mean, you can, you can look at videos or you can look at the real animal in the zoo and look at it. And it's like, what, you know, I mean, I didn't get it. There was, it didn't blow in the breeze, really. It kind of moved a little <laughs> bit. And, and when, you know, and it, it crushed a little. So you could tell it was fairly thick, you know, when they were curled up or something. Um, but what is that fur? You know, so so finally we go, we go to the San Diego Wild Animal Park and the koala specialist uh, allowed me to touch like the back of the koala as, as it was being held sort of away from me that I could just bring my hand in and, and feel the texture of that fur. And it was unlike anything I'd ever felt before. And it was suddenly, okay, now I understand it. Now I get That's awesome. what, what that fur is all about. So now I can animate it. You did okay. animate, uh, you did animate Maurice on Beauty and the Beast. Yes, I was in uh, Ruben Aquino's unit. And, and I was, this, this was the first human for me to animate. And how was and, that? I, I, and, I mean, was well, that intimidating? Uh, yeah. For the first, for the, probably for the first day, I'm, I'm going, oh my goodness, I'm going to, I'm going to do a human. Um, and then I realized because I, then I started studying Maurice and his part and, and what Ruben had done. And Maurice is actually a critter. He's a little animal. <laughs> and 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 Ruben Ruben even drew him like his caricatures of of bunnies and raccoons and squirrels and that kind of stuff um, as this little chipmunk kind of guy. So so suddenly I had a path into Maurice. It was like okay, I I know little animals. I can do this. It, at the same time, I did Maurice. I also did the little enchanted footstool. Right. So I was so I was studying little little terrier dogs. Because that's what that's what I thought um, the footstool was. He turned out to be a sheepdog, but but <laughs> as as a piece of furniture, he was a little terrier dog to me. Um, and that was another really cool thing too, because it was a combination of animating a little dog and furniture. And sometimes if he'd get like like stunned or or surprised or something, he'd turn into furniture for a minute, but then he'd go back to being a dog. So and I I liked that that those little jokes that I could throw in those little like furniture jokes. And while she did a fantastic job in Beauty and the Beast, Ellen did not love the responsibility she had been tasked with. So I also did the scene in the bar where um, Maurice's cronies, uh, conf uh, they, they pick on Maurice, they throw him down on the floor and they throw it, they, they, uh, they ridicule him and they, mm -hmm. they threaten him and they throw him out the door into the snowdrift. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, look. crazy old Maurice. <laughs> He's always good for a laugh. So these these characters were uh, uh, stupid, ugly, mean. Um, um, they were things that I don't enjoy. Mm. And but you know, but everybody got their bunch of 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 crowd things to do, you know, so I did them, but man, it was, it was like forcing concrete blocks through my veins. It was really, really hard. Eager to move past the role she didn't like in Beauty and the Beast, 
Ellen earnestly sought an opportunity to be the directing animator on Zazu's character in The Lion King. I wrote a lot of letters. Oh. I wrote I wrote letters to Roger Allers, to um, Rob Minkoff. Um, I <laughs> at one point I took Roger out to lunch, and I was like I was like ready to. I wanted to ask him. I, I wanted to tell him how interested I was in animating Zaz, uh, Zazu, and. Um, that that I and and all the quali- qualifications that I had, and I had a list of what what I'd done, what I'd already achieved, and how this was would make me an effective directing animator. And and so we got to the end of the lunch, and Roger goes, "So so why did you ask me out to lunch?" <laughs> and I'm like, I was just I was just so nervous. So I got out, I think I got out my list. You may remember whether there was a list or, I don't know, anyway. And I said, well, because I, I really want to be the directing animator on Zazu, and this is why I think I could do a really good job for you. I don't know how long after that lunch, um, I, I, I think I was called into uh, Robin Rogers' office. Some, we were in somebody's office, I don't remember the details um and they offered me sarabi who is simba's mother right right they offered me simba's mother um and uh i i i had no i had no experience Mm -hmm. with being a mother i was not interested in being a mother i didn't know what i would do to research being a mother i didn't know how to embrace that character because uh, it was not something that I was really interested in. And how talk- could I how could I bring something out of me, out of my heart that wasn't there? And I turned them down. I did said, you tell the, did you tell them why you turned yes, them down? Yes, I said I can't do that. I don't know how to be a mother. I don't want to be a mother. Right. And and I went away and I and I thought, oh my goodness, what have I done? But I I couldn't uh, I, I couldn't just do it because yeah. it was offered to me. It had, hmm. I, it had to come from a place where I could, I could bring something to the, to the character, to the role, to the performance that was exciting to me, you know? Okay. So then later, because, be, because the good thing did happen, um, um, they offered me Zazu. That's awesome. Perfect. So, Yeah. Yeah. And, and that was, that was, I mean, I, I felt like I, I'd been rescued from the abyss or something, you know, I mean, it was, it was like, oh my goodness, you can't animate something if you can't, or I can't, if you can't feel it, if you can't feel it in your own body, if you can't act it out in your own body, if you can't imagine like for a bird that your wrist bends like completely wrong from what a human wrist does, because Bird wrists bend in completely different axes from human wrists. Um, so, so you had to you had to imagine all that stuff and paste it onto your body, and assume the character of the animal, and then act out your scene and then animate it. Well, then thumbnail it and animate it. Search uh, uh, be, before animating that character. Yes, and and not only Zazu but also Rowan Atkinson. <laughs> because because he he w- he was basically a caricature of Rowan and sure. and um and not not really Mr. Bean but the Black Adder series yes where he's, where he's the very sarcastic um, historical figure um and the expressions and the body language and um I mean there there was there was there was so much there it was such a rich character because of all this bird stuff. And then all this Rowan stuff. Listen. Oh, very good. Pouncing. Pouncing? Oh, no, sire, you can't be serious. Oh, this is so humiliating. Try not to make us. What are you telling him, Mufasa? Mufasa? Simba? <laughs> <laughs> Ellen Woodbury's story is special for one reason. She didn't just succeed because she was extraordinarily talented but also because she was determined, courageous, and never backed down from a challenge. As such, Ellen has left an indelible footprint in animation as a skilled professional and a woman who broke the glass ceiling and paved the way for future women animators. Like my sister, who drew this picture and fell through a skylight. 
but then went on to lay sidewalk outside Disney Animation Studios. Well, it's the determination that counts anyways. Get away from here, you, you, you cursed filthy ape! Thank you to these people for supporting us on Patreon and Coffee. And if you want to make sure this channel sticks around, you can check out our Coffee link in the description. Every bit helps. Thank you for watching this episode of Disographies. Click the thumbs up button below if you liked it. And if you want to be notified when the next episode comes out, consider subscribing and hitting the bell. Comment below with characters you would like to see us cover. Further reading and references are linked below. We hope to see you in another Disography. I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts. Dee -dee 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 -dee. There they are, a standing in a row. Big one small one, some as big as your head. No, I would never have had to do this for Mufasa. What?